All right, welcome to episode two of The Lysis. In this episode, um, well, let me go back. Last episode, we talked about how the evil cannot be friends with the evil. And I made a comment in that video how the evil cannot be friends with anyone, let alone another evil person. And I'd like to explore that in this one. And we'll talk about all the different possible friendships and which ones work and which ones don't. So to begin, evil cannot be friends with evil because the longer two evil people are in each other's presence, the more they irritate and sort of push away the other person because the evil person does what is harmful to those around them. In the same way, you know, I think sort of obviously the evil cannot be friends with the good. And I guess maybe I should back up a little bit. Friends meaning like an intentional benefit, you know, something like that. I'm not going to nail down exactly what friendship is because I think, I mean, that's, that's a whole, not only is that a whole, that's a whole video, I, that's a, that's a life's endeavor to really nail down, well, what is friendship? But the evil cannot be the friend of the good because the evil harms the good and the good does not, you know, doesn't reciprocate that, that sort of a relationship. But also because the evil has no desire for the good. It lacks the good, but even though it lacks what is good, it doesn't have a desire for it. Wickedness, vice, does not draw one into desiring virtue or excellence. Uh, virtue and excellence must be an escape from or a healing of wickedness and vice. One wickedness does not lead to virtue. But Plato has Socrates go on and say, well, but neither can the good be friends with the good. And that's a trickier statement. And he says it for this reason. He says the good cannot be friends with the good because they don't lack what the other, they don't lack anything the other has. If someone is truly perfect and someone else is truly perfect, he, that's what he means by good. So they have no faults. They, they don't, they don't have anything to give to the other. They don't have a mutually beneficial relationship because neither of them lacks anything. And you can only desire what you lack. And so they don't have any desire for each other. He also goes on to say, you know, another way that you can understand the good is just like, you know, if someone's like good at carpentry or something like that. Um, and he posits, um, possibly humorously, that if you ever get two people who think they're experts in a field in the same room, they're the two people least likely to become friends um, because they'll just irritate each other because they're constantly peacocking to see, you know, to try to show off who's better. I wouldn't refer to those people as good, well, I wouldn't refer to their particular actions in that situation as good. I'll correct myself a little bit there. Um, and so in a sense I would, you know, if someone's trying to show off how, how expert they are and another person is trying to show off how expert they are, that's really the evil not being friends with the evil because showing off and trying to strut your stuff and draw attention to yourself and pump up your own ego and your vanity things. Well, that's obviously not good. So that's, that's not the good being friends with the good or trying to be friends with the good. It's the evil failing to be friends with the evil. And he would say, you know, he goes on, the good obviously is not friends with the evil because the evil has nothing that it can give to the good. The good does not desire anything from the evil. And so they can't be friends. And that's all the relationships between the good and the evil and none of them work. And he goes on, he says, well, isn't there really a third category? Isn't there that which is neither good nor evil? Um, and he never gives it a name. I'm gonna call it the neutral so that I don't have to keep saying that which is neither good nor evil, which is what he does. Um, I think that's too much. I thought about calling it the mediocre, but then I thought that's, that's got the wrong connotations. That's not gonna work. Well, let's explore that. Can the evil be friends with that which is neither good nor evil? Can the evil be friends with the neutral? 
And for the same reason they can't be friends with the good, no, they do not desire. They, they do not desire what the person who is neutral has. And so for the same reasons that they aren't friends with the good, they aren't friends with the neutral because the neutral is really just better than evil. And, you know, so is the good. Their relationship to evil is one of better and evil does not desire that. And in the same way, the good does not desire friendship with the neutral because evil and neutral both have the same relationship to the good. They are both less. Okay. On the neutral, from their standpoint, can they be friends with someone? Well, can the neutral be friends with the evil? And the answer is no, because the evil can't give them anything. Maybe I already said that possibility. Evil does not desire what the neutral has. The neutral does not lack what the evil, you know, can give it, which is nothing. And so the neutral cannot be friends with evil. And Socrates in this dialogue seems to land on the possibility that the real French, the only real friendship is from the, is between the, the neutral and the good. The neutral lacks what the good has. It's not as good as the good. But because it's not entirely corrupt, it still desires the good. And in that way, the person who's neutral can have a true friendship with the good. Which is, which is worth, you know, interesting you know, we're thinking about it. I think it, it does, you know, we can talk a little bit about what does he mean by friendship here. I know I didn't want to define it really, but we can explore it a little bit. Clearly he means something beneficial. And he clearly means that uh, two people do not have to be friends with each other for one to be friends with the other. In, in his mind, he's thinking you can be a friend towards someone who does not reciprocate it. He's, he must be allowing that because if the good cannot be friends with the neutral, but the neutral can be good, can be friends with the good, obviously there's a non-reciprocity there. Well, and that, and so it's something beneficial. It's something intentional and it involves desire. And it involves desire to become more like, which is why he then goes on and says, well, then, you know, the neutral cannot be friends with the neutral because you don't desire to become more like that which you already are. And that kind of breaks things for him. Because no one is actually perfectly good. We're, and, and really, no one's perfectly evil. We're all somewhere in the neutral. We're all somewhere in the in-between. There's, there's things about us that are good and things about us that are evil. And he just pointed out that the neutral can't be friends with the neutral. And does that mean that there's no friendship? And he doesn't accept that. He says, there must be friendship. He says, I, I know that there is friendship between humans. We must have defined it totally incorrectly. And he sort of, well, what ends up happening is through the through the means of the dialogue the people he's talking to get called away and he can't you know he their conversation ends before they come to an answer i have a posit that's possible but that's another video thank you so much for joining me in this series on plato if you'd like to see the next video in this series go ahead and click right up there if you missed it and want to see the previous video in the series Click over there, and if you like this content and want to see more, consider subscribing.